up first Wednesday. Where you guys at? Any Jesus freaks in the house? That's what I thought. It's first Wednesday. It's the rowdy crews in the house. I love it. I love it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rich. I'm the lead pastor here. And man, I love first Wednesdays because we get the, the pool. Like everybody who wants to be here is here. And on Sunday, we get a lot of people that somebody put them in the headlock and got them to church. And so they're like, touch me, Jesus. <laughs> Change my heart, Jesus. <laughs> and so you got to break through some of that. But you guys are here because you want to be here. Just like my wife said, you fought through working all day. So I'm tired. Probably the, the devil earlier on was like, ah, don't go to church. You're tired. But you were like, Shut up, devil. <laughs> you don't know nothing, right? Uh, no, we're exciting. Hey, uh, right outside when you leave here, there's going to be a black table. We got some elder friends of ours. Pat and Russell will be out there. We're, we're setting up some teams to go out to the West Coast. I uh, was on some phone calls today planning some stuff. Here's what I know about disasters, which isn't a lot, uh, but enough to know that there's a lot of help on the front end and not a lot of help on the back end. Um, so we're going to help on the front end, which we already have, and we're going to help on the back end too, and in the middle part as well. And so it takes the teams to do that. And so what we want to do is we want to get that in front of you. So if you're interested in helping financially, physically, uh, through prayer, whatever, stop by and see Russell and Pat. They'll help you and just get some instructions, get your contact information, and it will be helpful for us to plan in the future. So maybe you have some drywall skills or you're just ready to help clean up or shovel mud or whatever. We'll, we'll be in charge of putting those teams together, but we need your help. So thank you for that. Uh, how many got your Bibles with you tonight? Okay, that's horrible. I ain't gonna lie. I'm just gonna tell you like it is. That's horrible. How many of you have a Bible at home? Okay. Why is it at home? That's the question. Bring it to church. You need it with you. It's like, I know we put it up on the screen for you. That's probably my fault. I, I might stop doing it one day and uh, just see what happens to you then. I know you'll be like, I got it on my phone. Okay, well, I'll shut down the Wi-Fi or something. I'll, I'll block a signal. I'll do something. I'm crazy, you know. So, <laughs> uh, man, it's Yom Kippur. Probably a lot of you don't know what that is, uh, but it literally means the Day of Atonement. On a special time that it lands on first Wednesday. And, um, you know, when we look at the, the appointed festivals, and you can find them in Scripture in Leviticus, when you look at those, they all look forward to Jesus coming and his second coming. And, you know, we know that the, the word atonement is important because it, it really talks about us getting back to the place where we're supposed to be with Jesus in right relationship. The word at, uh, at one with or atone, you can look at it like that, to make at one with, that Jesus came, he reconciled, he fixed, he redeemed, he bought back, right? And uh, we're going to look at something a little different tonight, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. And as followers of Jesus, we know that you don't have to wait for one day a year, right, to come in. And this isn't about fear, right? You should fear the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says. But isn't like God's trying to just crush you down. God's saying, come here. Let me love you. That's all his, always his call, his beck and call is just come here. Let me love you. And so uh, uh, the Day of Atonement is a great remembrance of that. So it, it's special to, to think about that today. But if you've got your Bibles, I want to jump over to the book of Romans. Some of you thought maybe I was going to jump into Acts, but I want to keep Sunday morning with uh, the whole church kind of running uh, as much as we can together on this. So I want to jump over to chapter 15 tonight. How many of you eaten a Chick-fil-A? Right, Chick-fil-A? That's all, man. That's the Lord's chicken. You guys got to get your lives right, you know. They were like, Popeye's is better. Popeye's is not better. Chick-fil-A is better. It's got the blessing. The hand of the Lord is on that chicken. And um, I know I did this a lot of times when you go there. It's gotten less over the years, I think. But it used to be when, when they helped you, right, you would say, hey, thanks. And they would say, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, right? It always feels good, right? Because in, in South Florida, there's not, sometimes the, the hospitality isn't that great. And so when you go to some place and they look you in the eye and they say, it's my pleasure, you're like, oh, okay. I feel like the king today. It feels great. And that's how it's supposed to be. But it's kind of gotten away from that. I don't want to think about that for a second as we, we talk tonight about serving each other. And we talk about living as a great example and following the greatest example of Jesus, right? It's this this Jewish hammer swinging carpenter from Nazareth, right? This guy who came and changed the world. Everything we think, everything, how we operate just totally changed because of this man's life. Fully God, fully man. And, and it is our job to become imitators of him in our life, to be followers of him, to be disciples of him. And that's one of the reasons why I love Wednesday nights is that I can talk to you very straight and I can ask you to really kick it in gear. And that's what I want to talk to you 
tonight. Now, we're going to be in chapter 15, but I want to just give you the, the, the breakdown out of 14, really kind of tackled some issues, some relevant stuff, or not just the church back then, but the, the church that we're talking to today. And what we know about church is that it's not just, it's, it's only this. So you might be here tonight and you're like, I don't know what's up with all these lights. I hate these lights. I want some stained glass windows and a King James Version Bible. And that's fine, right? That's fine. It's not just one size fits all. There's different types and different styles. But on the major issues, God's word is very clear. There are major issues and his word is very clear. But on maybe some of the other things... We just maybe sometimes agree to disagree about some things as the church around the world. But again, on the major issues, we need to be very, very clear on this. And so as we understand that chapter 14 helped with that, 15 kind of gives another lesson when a believer is dealing with some things. And, and again, how, how we're going to follow Jesus' lead and how we respond to each other and how we respond to the world. It's very, very easy to pass judgment. Right, I know what Matthew 7 one says, judge not lest you be judged, right? That's the King James Version. But there, there can be some judgment inside the church, but we have to be careful how we do it. And we can't just run around being judgmental all the time. We need to help each other, encourage each other, and build up. And Jesus was the supreme builder. He's the master builder. Not just because he was a carpenter and he built buildings, but because he built people. And we want to build people. We want to disciple people. And we want, to, we want to get them in the process and get them to the Lord so the Lord can build them into the vessels that he would have them be. And so as we look at this, uh, Romans chapter 15, what it's really, really talking about is living to help others. And so I'm asking you tonight, as this church, this group of people right here tonight, I'm asking you to help me and to help us help others. I'm asking you, I'm ch I'm, th there's a charge here. I'm charging you with this. Instead of just showing up and coming to services on Sunday, I just, just out of curiosity, and I need you to be honest, how many of you serve here at church? It's a lot of you, right? Now let me see the other. How many of you do not serve here at church? Come on, raise your hand. Don't just look at me. Right? Okay, we need to fix that. We need to fix it. Now, how many of you serve out in the community during the week? Any time? Raise your hands. All right. How many of you don't serve out in the community? Be honest. Okay. We got to fix that. We got to fix this. Like, what are we doing? We just show up for a service and do sign of the cross, Hail Mary, and go on with our business? No, that's not what we're doing. 15 looks at the example of Jesus, the model and behavior of Jesus. This is huge. Let's go after it. We got to get, get moving. Verse 1. It says, we who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. Man, we live in a society that is totally bent on pleasing itself. I mean, totally narcissistic in all of its behavior. It's about me, and if we're not careful, you talk about it. If, you're, if all your statements say, well, I think, and I think we should do this, and I want, and I desire, and it's about me, and it, you need to change, you need to shift that mindset. You need to shift that kind of, not just verbiage, but that your behavior and your thinking, you need to start looking. And if you start serving people, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine as we were traveling. If we would serve people... Right? I think a lot of our problems at home would start disappearing. You know why? Because they're not real problems. Our life is so good, it's so good that we just manufacture problems. Right? That's why we stand at the cabinet in the refrigerator and say there's nothing to eat. We've manufactured a problem when we absolutely know that it's true. When people in Africa are literally starving to death, they're wondering where they're going to get a few grains of rice, rice so they don't starve to death. And we're like, I've got nothing to eat. This is horrible. We've manufactured problems. Paul has summarized this discussion really in 14, uh, talking, talking about our strength and how we ought to do. But he's saying we should really help with, with the weak as they're failing, as they're not being able to get done what they're done. Could be spiritually, physically, mentally, all these areas. We need to help. And there's a strong push here. We ought to do this, right? This is a present tense, but there's an emphasis on the continuing of this. We ought. We should. You better be doing. You better get it in gear. You better help out as the church. And so the strong should not just seek to please themselves, but there's also this thing. is. You should be helping others 
as verse 2 says, we should help others do what is right and what? Build them up in the Lord. It's very easy sometimes to just throw something at a need, right? So somebody, a beggar on the street, some of you give them money because you don't want to talk to them. That's the truth, right? We've all been guilty of that, I think, right? But building people up. And we come in here again, and if we're not careful, we'll come in here, we'll do the routine, and we will literally not talk to one person here. How does that happen? Is that community? Is that fellowship? Is that koinonia? Is there a building process? Am I looking at you and saying, hey, I'm not, this, isn't a tr- this isn't transactional for me. It's like, what can I get out of these people, right? I want to be in relationship with you. I, w- I want to be in covenant with you. But if you don't allow that, if you don't allow me to speak into your life, guess what? Maybe you're not helping me. Maybe I need you to speak into my life. Maybe just that. Maybe you're, you're, you're not speaking to people in here and you're holding the exact word that they need that day to cling to life, to, to take the next step. Think about that. This is important as we really march forward in this tonight. It says in verse 3, for even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O oh God, have fallen on me. Even Jesus didn't please himself. Oh, well, he was the son of God. I mean, he went to the, remember when he went to the desert, he was tempted. The devil, devil came and said, well, you can turn these stones into bread. What did he do? What did he do? He threw scripture at him. Bang. Man shall not live by bread alone, right? But everywhere that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Like we know this and we come to this, but we're really moving towards getting the scripture inside of us so that what? So that we can be built up, so that we can be strengthened to do the will of God. Most of you aren't, honestly, you're not strong enough to do the will of God. You're surviving life. That's what you do. You wake up, you fight traffic, you go to work, you hate your coworkers, you hate your boss, you get home, you struggle with your family, you struggle to get dinner on a table, you wake up and like sometimes you come to church when it's convenient, when it feels good, when it falls right into place. Otherwise, it's just like, I don't know, I'm picking on the, the Wednesday night crowd here. You guys are good about being here, but... Man, I, we can't, we gotta, we gotta shift focus. We gotta shift focus. And whatever, whatever you're living for in this moment, right, probably, like, unless it's the Lord, it, it definitely won't hold into eternity. There is nobody that's gonna be talking about stuff in eternity. <laughs> nobody. I was talking with Charlie earlier. We were talking. I said, hey, he said, if the Lord tarries. I said, if he doesn't, if he peels back the sky today, I'll meet you in the sky, bro. <laughs> like, I, you think I'm going to be going, oh, what about this? Oh, man, I didn't get to do this. No, I'm going, like, I'm going home. That's home. This isn't home. This is just a temporary place that I'm surviving. But, but, right, that we, that we get here and there's something being built in us so that we can do what we're supposed to do while we're here. Because he is coming back. He's coming back, but until then, you have work to do. I said you. That's what I want to focus on tonight. And and, and I'm going to focus on me throughout the week, but you need to hear that tonight, that you have work to do, right? And listen, as you associate yourself with Jesus more and more, you better get ready to take on the onslaught of insults. You better get yourself ready. I mean, if Jesus, right? Christ was insulted. Christ hung on the cross. He said, it's not always going to be like this. If they hate you, they hated me first. And I've told you a thousand times, if everybody likes you, you ain't doing it right. You ain't doing it right. Especially in this society. Hey, man, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Quit talking about that stuff. That's going to become more and more prevalent because of your association with God, because of your your proclamation that you are a child of God, a disciple of Jesus. The world is going to pin you over there. It's very divisive, right? It says, "You, you can't, you hate me because of what you believe, which we know isn't true, but those are the types of things, those are the types of things that are becoming more and more prevalent in our society. Verse 4 says, such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us, to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. I am doing my very, very best to help you guys get this in you. 
And to be honest, you're very resistant to it. You're very resistant to it. Why is it so difficult? Why, why can we sit there and binge watch garbage on your favorite whatever platform, but you can't get this inside of you daily? Why is that? What is that? Oh, it's boring. I, I've told you before, you're boring. We're reading Judges' his staff, and Luis Ortiz was, he came to me earlier, and he's like, man, it's so graphic. She took a spike, and this guy was rolled up in carpet, and she nailed it through his head, and it says it, the spike went through his head into the ground. That doesn't sound boring. That sounds pretty exciting. Like, wow. And you're like, I didn't even know that was in there because you don't read. Because you haven't read it. you got to get it inside of you. Why? Because it's going to teach you. Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, this is, the scripture is good for you. It's good for a lot. It's not good for your entertainment. It's good to teach you and exhort you and to build you up for training in righteousness so that in this next season, when all the stuff begins to come to you, you will be prepared to take it. You won't be like, oh, I just feel weak and frail. Now, some of you are weak and frail. And that's why verse 1 is saying, those of you who are strong have to help those people but eventually weak people you have to help yourself you have to help yourself i'm not my daughter's 18 years old i am not going to pick up a spoon and put it in her mouth we told her for 18 years Hey, you're a disciple of Jesus. You've got to read your word. You've got to get it inside of you. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm still going to tell her those things, but I can't, I can't do it for anymore. You know how weird that is physically? Well, it's weird spiritually too. That you've been in the church for this many years, and you can't pick up the word of God and feed yourself. Listen, I'm just going to tell you straight up, since it's Wednesday night. Don't come to me and tell me you're not being fed. Don't, don't tell me that. Tell me, what's wrong with you? You have no arms? Feed yourself. Feed yourself. I'm not being fed. Well, study. Eat something. The cabinet is full. Don't stand there looking at the cabinet going, we have nothing to eat. My God, open up the, the Bible. Get it inside of you. Eat a feast. There's a feast inside of us. We look that. We know that, that we have to go to the word of God. It teaches us the greatest truth. It offers us the greatest good. It meets the greatest need in our life. And it directs us to the greatest hope that is Jesus Christ. You're looking for direction? It's got direction for you. An encouragement that that hope would come alive inside of you. Now, again, it's Wednesday night, so most of you are hope-filled. You're here, you're getting charged up, you're going you're gonna to leave this place like, uh, we're going to take over the world, right? That's how it should be every day, every day. And it's a, it's a fight to keep it. It's a fight to keep it. I'll be honest with you, I was on the way over here with my wife, and right through the intersection, this guy came and cut me off. So I gave him a little Miami Dade burp, you know, and that, that joker slammed on the brakes. On the way to church, my heart rate went to like 195. I didn't have my shirt on, I just had like this cut off t shirt. <laughs> I was feeling mighty South Florida at that time. And my wife was like, Calm yourself down. I was like, Oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> Still, people, right? It's a fight. It's a fight, but I had to go back to the hope that is Jesus. I had to go back to the example that is Jesus. It's not me. I can't, I, like, I don't have it, what it takes to get it done. I need him inside of me every single day, and i got to have the word of God alive inside of me. you got to get the word inside of you. You don't need a bottle. You don't need a pill. You don't need a pipe. You need Jesus inside of you. you need, that's the one. you got to get it. That's the training. That's the buildup. That's the correction that happens for us. Verse 5. we got to get moving. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for the followers of Christ Jesus. I love harmony, right, if it's right. You know, some people think they can sing, but they can't sing. Oof, it's rough, right? You ever been around, like I've been around a lot of praise and worship teams, a lot of people that think they can sing. And you might have one person that can really, really sing, and this other person thinks they're coming in with the harmony. 
And it's like, Lord Jesus, <laughs> help them, God, correct, auto-tune their voice, Lord. <laughs> Just make something happen there because it's a lot, you know. Or you push the slider down on the, the, the mic or something. I don't know what happens there. But if we, if we live in this spiritually something happens, we become to harmonize with each other. We, be, we become to, to work together. You know what harmony means? They're different parts. They're different parts. Sometimes we sing in unison, right? And it's beautiful. But I love harmony because it's taking two different parts and they come together to be beautiful. I don't need you to be like me. I don't need you to be like Janet. We're very different. We are very different, but when we work together in harmony, nobody can take over. I don't, like, I don't care if you spend $100,000 on your, on your wedding. We were married at a Chinese magistrate, and I would put our marriage against anybody because we have the harmony of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in our relationship. And when we are tuned in and dialed in, there's nobody that can stop it, right? That's God's marriage. That's God's harmony. This is the kind of harmony we have to have with each other. And listen, it's happening at life point. It's happening, and I'm watching it happen. I'm watching people come in like, you're totally different than me, and I'm watching them connect. I'm like, they're totally different, but something is going on. It's the harmony of the Holy Spirit, and here's what it says about it. It's fitting. That's how it's supposed to be. If it's not, if it's like, oh, I don't like that person because so-and-so, uh, uh, you know what I mean? And talking about this person, and then, did you see them? Did you see what they're wearing? I can't believe that. I saw them Friday night. Listen, knock that off. Start building People up, right? He says here that he gives this, this patience. It's available. Patience and endurance. That means we need it. That means we need it. We need patience. We need encouragement. We need endurance. And the Christian received this from where? Ultimately from God, but he gives us his what? But you don't read it. We must not want to endure. He's talking about, Lord, give me more patience. Read his word. That's what it says. It comes from the word. It's just like you get it inside of you. Let it, let it get in you. And then it begins to bring the readers. If all of us are reading this, I don't care about your translation. If all of it, as long as it's the word of God, get it inside of you. And, and then what happens? It begins to give us a spirit of unity. A spirit of unity. Which we cannot live without. Everything the devil is throwing at us in society is to divide us. And sometimes it seems good, but you see, when you see separation, when you see this, when you start seeing pockets, da, 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 you already know. I already know. I'm not a prophet. I'm not trying to be a prophet. I just have been around long enough to know that when I see somebody separate themselves, it's already over. Until they realize, what am I doing? Why am I separating? Why am I not operating in harmony? Why am I not, why have I not humbled myself? Why is there pride in my life? Why is it, why haven't I said I'm sorry? Why haven't I gone in Matthew 18 and said, hey, I'm sorry if I offended you, but you've offended me, and let's get back together. Let's fix this thing. We're children of God, and the spirit of unity must come over us for this next season in the church. Verse 6 says, and all of you, all of you, I'm talking about all the scripture reading, harmonizing, beautiful people ready to unify, ready to take over the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What happens? All of you can join together with one voice. One voice. What? And sometimes when you guys are singing out, and the band comes down just a little bit. I hear all the people out there, and the voice gets louder than the band. My favorite. So it's because it becomes one voice. One voice. Stand with me real quick. I'm not done. Just hang with me. Because it's, it's not, again, this isn't entertainment. We're not, here for, we're not here for a show for you. We're here that God would unify our hearts. Jesus prayed it, that God would unify our hearts. Give us one voice, God. Why? So that we can give praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When one heart, when one heart, single-hearted, one mouth, one vision to see people dis dis discipled and to go after all of this be becomes realistic. When we just put our hearts in the, in the hands of God and say, do what you want with me. 
do what you want with me. And it changes us individually. It changes our families. It changes our church. And then ultimately it goes out and changes the world. It happened with the disciples, and it's supposed to happen with us. I've told you a thousand times, quit complaining about homestead. Stop it. People are going to cut you off. They're going to flex at you, and you're going to have to, right? You're going to, oh, Lord, you're going to have to. But even right now, in my mind, I'm like praying for that guy. I'm praying for him. praying for me, too for him. There's, there's, there's something that has to happen. Verse 7, I went in with this. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given the glory. When I came when I came to this church, I sat with the elders and we talked and we believed and I said, hey, we're going to, if I come here, we're going to set the, we're going to set the table. And when you set the table and you invite everybody to the table, it gets messy sometimes. You know what I mean? Is why you don't go out in the streets and you don't invite people to your house. That's the truth, right? Because we're afraid it's going to get messy. Well, this is this is our house. And this is the table that we're set. Except we're saying from the highways and the byways, come on in. You're welcome. Doesn't matter if you struggle with this issue or this issue or this thing or that thing. It doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome in this house. But when you come here, expect construction to start in your life. Because there's a building process that has to happen. I don't want you to leave here like you came in Jesus' name. I want you to be better. And God does his work quickly. And he does it perfectly. When he works on people, he works on people. Right? I know some of you deal with contractors. Like, I just can't get them to show up. Jesus always shows up. He never leaves. He's there with you the whole time. And so when we think about this, it's significant. So I told you at the beginning, I said, I need you. I need you to help us. I need you to help us. Help what? Help us help people. If you're not serving, serve. Sign up today. Get in a connect group because you can help people. You can help build people. I'm asking you to help us help others in this society. I'm asking you to go with us. Listen, very clearly, I want you to get this. First Wednesday, I'm asking you to give me a one year. If you're in town, get to church. Quit laying out. Get to church. One year. Just give me one year. Because I know if you give me one year of commitment to Jesus Christ, you're going to give him the rest of your life. Because he will change everything inside of you. I know that. Give me one year, church. Give me one, give me one year and we'll change the world. We'll change the world together. We'll change the world together. Right where you're at, listen, I want to just open up the altar. We're going to sing together. We're going one voice tonight. We're going with one voice. Come on, just begin to come. If you want to come in here, you want more of Jesus. You want him to change your life. You're saying, I'm in, I'm in in this thing, Lord. I, I don't know what it is, but something's being built in my life tonight, and I'm just giving it all to you. Come on, make your way. Come on, make your way. Make your way. It's between you and the Lord, but, man, we're here together. We're, we're ripping in, and, and I know there are people in this room tonight. God has saved you from crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. If you look back at that, you're like, how did I get built? My life was in shambles and now I'm built. Well, he's not done building church. Right where you are, just bow your heads tonight. If you, want, if you want to make your way, you can. Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place. God, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing tonight, God. We are unified in this place. This is your church. This is your people. And God, we just ask right now that you touch our hearts, that you change our lives, that you minister to us tonight, God. Holy Spirit, dispense into us exactly what we need for this next season. God, unify us in this place, Lord, so that the earth will see you and give you the glory, God. Everything that we're doing is for your praise, for your glory, for your honor.